Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mikalina Jadik. I'm here today. I'm a freshman, actually, at Boston University right now, but I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. And I'm resen uh, representing Advent Health Hospital in Tampa, Florida. So I just big thank you to our moderators today, Dr. Qureshi and Dr. Logue. It's, it's a wonderful honor to be able to come and present our institution's research with you. So our topic today, male surgeons' perceptions of female surgeons. Is there a bias against women in surgery? Well, yes, there is. And understanding this problem is imperative when learning how to fix it. So let's take a look at the numbers. While women represent over 50% of all medical students, we continuously see only a small percentage, 19% of those, uh, those students who become surgeons in the United States. And many have asked the questions, why is this happening? Where is the disconnect? And finally, how can it be resolved? Especially in the face of a projected shortage of practicing surgeons, it is more important now than ever to investigate, understand, and work to eliminate the barriers encountered by this large and unique talent pool. Many factors have been shown to discourage women from pursuing a career in surgery. For example, lifestyle implications. Surgery is a very demanding career with long and irregular work hours. However, to understand why this affects women more than men, it's important to recognize that the disparity also has deep roots. And this has to do with the surgical culture itself, which many have called a quote-unquote boys club. And this dominating culture is one of the reasons why we have a lack of women mentors in academic surgery as well, which creates an even more exclusive environment. However, as society is evolving, our institution wanted to see if men's surgeons' perceptions reflect progress that is being made. Because in many ways, perception is reality. And if men continue to perceive gender-based discrimination within the surgical workforce, that viewpoint will inevitably trickle down and continue to discourage women from pursuing surgery as a career. The purpose of this study was to determine if men's surgeons' perceptions rep uh, perceptions of women surgeons represent a bias against women in surgery today. And we hypothesize that yes, men's surgeons' perceptions do indicate a continued bias. Moving on to our methods, uh, we created a surveymonkey.com questionnaire using 75 point Likert scale questions, 63 multiple choice questions, and finally the respondents were informed their answers would remain anonymous. Of the 190 men surgeons who responded, we had 84% who are white and have been attending for more than five years. Next, the questions have been divided into six main categories, going all the way from abilities to general problems. And once the responses were collected, a tallied summary of the results was obtained, and regression analysis and ANOVA test was used to determine significance with 95% probability. Now, let's move on to our results section, beginning with abilities. So with this first statement, women are as capable as their male counterparts, we immediately see 80% who agree, which is relatively good because their perception indicates a respect for women regardless of gender. However, it is also important to take a look at the 10% who disagreed. Though this is very small in comparison, that's actually pretty significant. If we think about this in terms of, say we have a table of 10 male surgeons, that means at least one of them is likely to believe that women are not as capable as men. And that doesn't even take into account the entire other 10% who didn't know whether to agree or disagree. With the statement, women make good surgeons, we found that 60% agree, 67% agreed. And it was actually interesting to take a look at how age played a factor in these responses. We found that older male surgeons were more likely to believe women make good surgeons as opposed to younger male doctors. So this is actually, this is pretty surprising, right? Because we anticipate as times are evolving, younger doctors are going to have more progressive ideas on the subject. However, this response seems to indicate otherwise, and that's an important part of the conversation. Moving on to the ability section. When asked if women have the same advancement opportunities as men, 75% were quick to say yes. However, when a more specific question was asked, uh, whether men's surgeons in particular are afforded more opportunities, 32%, almost one third of the respondents agreed that yes, men's surgeons are afforded more opportunities today. Furthermore, when we asked if women are discouraged from entering the surgical profession because program directors question their ability to complete surgical training, while 50% said no, that left the entire other half of the respondents who either said yes or were unsure of how to answer. This is especially a problem when you consider that 95% believe that men and women residents are trained equally. 
Moving on to the topic of family obligations, we asked if it is possible for women to be both a good surgeon and a good mom as opposed to men. And while we had 80% agreement for women, 96% agreed for men. That's an entire 16 point difference. Furthermore, when looking at the disagreement to these statements, 13% said it is not possible for women to be both a good surgeon and a good mom, while not one single male respondent said the same goes for men. So we decided to come out and ask, do you feel women surgeons experience more pressure to balance work and family life? And overwhelmingly, unsurprisingly, 84% said yes. We also asked whether having children adversely affects a woman surgeon's ability to succeed as opposed to a man surgeon's ability to succeed. And while 46% said yes, this does affect their abilities, 81% said no when it comes to men. Clearly, the topic of family obligations is a huge issue within the context of gender discrimination against women in surgery. And this is the case even though many have indicated that women and men have similar commitment to families outside of work. This has proven to be a big part of the issue in the past and likely moving forward as well. So that's why it is of paramount importance for us to take this into consideration and understand that it's happening. Moving on to the category of relationships, another interesting finding emerged where about 20% of our respondents indicated that while women surgeons are aggressive to work within the OR, it is quote unquote easier to work with their male colleagues. So let's take a look at what this really means. Is this because women must be aggressive in order to assert their dominance and leadership role just as any other person would? Or is this an issue based on conventional gender roles? For example, these old fashioned stereotypes tend to portray women as soft spoken. So therefore, when they must stand up and assert a leadership role, it may, neg it may unfairly uh, be portrayed as antagonistic when regards to women in comparison to men. Now, finally, with our problem section, we just came out and asked, do you think gender discrimination exists in surgery today? And 43% said yes. This finding clearly uh, portrays that the problem does persist in surgery, and therefore it is very important for men surgeons in particular to remain aware of that problem and actively work to eliminate that disparity within the work environment. Even with all of this in consideration, when asked if the rate of women pursuing a career in surgery is a problem that should be addressed, 57% said no. So, in conclusion, while men surgeons generally demonstrate a respect for the personal and professional abilities of women surgeons, these favorable opinions are by no means universal. Let's take a look at that statistic I just shared with you. It 57% of our respondents said that this is not a problem to work on. That's incredibly significant because the first step to solving any problem is recognizing that there is one. However, then we must commit to solving it. Only by promoting an equitable and inclusive work environment that promotes the engagement of women can we improve the future of surgery for the betterment of all its stakeholders, especially patients. Once again, my name is Mikalina Jadik. I'm here today on behalf of Advent Health Hospital in Boston University. Uh, thank you all once again for being here today.